everybody, it's Batman, and today we're going to be checking out another Daigo Knight video. So I know we've been doing a lot of reactions for Daigo Knight, but let's be real, he does come out with a lot of fire content. And he has the passion and love for Naruto, no matter what, he is goaded in that sense. And regardless if some if there have been some videos along the way that were really sus or questionable, whether if he was trolling, etc., whatever. At the end of the day, he does have many goaded videos, and there are a certain amount of, a good amount of content and videos that he has that you guys should definitely check out and at least give him a shot with. You know, um, he's not like completely horrendous overall, like, you know, when we're talking about other people, you know what I mean, that just want to bullshit or troll, you know, so, um, so overall, we're going to be checking this out, and the reason why we're actually checking this out is because I actually was originally, like, planning to make a video on this topic. It wasn't about, like, Obito mainly capturing, like, all the other Biju and whatnot, it was just mainly focused on Naruto, on why he never captured Naruto when he had so many opportunities, and he had many, by the way, in abundance, for most of them, you can uh, d definitely formulate arguments or justifications for why he didn't. But eventually, it gets to certain points where it just doesn't make any sense at all. And to the point where it's like, is it either a plot hole? Or is it, you know, for the plot convenience or whatever? Um, or was there really somehow a justification for that as well? You know what I mean? So, and it's really interesting to ponder about. And I was having these conversations with Jay the Great and Shinobi. And I was talking with them in my DMs, like, hey, I think it's a video we should all do together. Do you guys think it's a really cool topic? Whatever, what are your thoughts? We kind of brainstormed a bit. And we're like, yeah, this is go to whatever. And we'll eventually make the video on it. We haven't gotten to do that yet, but it is coming eventually. And so he unfortunately did beat me to the punch. And the reason why I thought this was a really great topic to do is because I'm going to be real. At least to my knowledge, I've never heard of anyone cover this type of a topic when it comes to Obido as a character. Sure, people have done like Naruto analysis as, with Obido, etc. Or like... Or explaining why Obito is in a plot hole and blah blah all this other crap whatever like even six has done a, a narrative naruto analysis video on Obito as well and that's kind of like the closest you ever get to really dissecting him as a character you know even swag kage as well but when it comes to like the whole correlation with the main objective and agenda that he had which was aka capturing all the tail beast and launching infant in sukiyomi right obviously that would correlate to eventually capturing naruto and if there are certain key points and moments where he could have why didn't he you know, so it's it's really interesting in, the, in that aspect. And, you know, I've, at first I was planning to to cover that video myself um, and do that as a topic, you know, as like a raw version and then eventually do a really good version of it with Jay the Great and Shinobi before anybody came out with it. But unfortunately, it's too late. So now I'll just do this reaction, kind of give it slight thoughts and whatnot of how I feel and everything when it comes to to Obito as a character. Um, and just see what he, have to, he also has to say, whether if it's a W or not, who cares? Um, and just kind of move from that direction, and uh, and that'll basically be it. And if you guys don't believe me about me, like, originally thinking of this topic and, like, deadass potentially even being the first one to have this, even as a topic as well, I have the DMs and all the evidence for it, brother. <laughs> I can literally send it to you, you know what I mean? I'm not going to show it in this video. I don't, I don't feel like it's that important, but I'm just putting that out there, you know? I don't lie. I don't bullshit, guys, you know what I mean? So... Anyways, let's get it. Let's check this video out and uh, let's do it. Invading the Leaf Village, snatching the Nine Tails out of Kushina, fighting against yeah. Obito, trying to capture the Nine Tails and destroy the village. A plan yeah. that was foiled by Minato. He did hurt Obito quite a bit during their fight, shoving yep. a Rasengan into him and then stabbing him with a kunai. And Obito yeah. retreats, stating that there are other ways to win this war. They save, or kinda, because Minato has to sacrifice himself to seal the Nine Tails back into Naruto because he wants to keep the Nine Tails as a resource in the Leaf Village. He states himself that he could have killed the Nine Tails, but he prefers to keep this as a Leaf Village asset, and he believes that Naruto will one day master the power of the Tail Beast and Amen. use it properly. Which takes about 16 years to happen when Naruto learns KCM, but throughout this time, especially when Naruto was young, like five, six, seven, yeah. why didn't <laughs> Obito just pop back into the Leaf Village and got Naruto? We knew he was after the Nine Tails because he needed every tail beast to complete the Eye of the Moon plan. This was Madara's plan that was passed on to Obito and Obito carried out Madara's will pretending he was Madara essentially. Naruto yeah. was very weak when he was a small kid. He couldn't do anything against Sasuke in his age so if Obito who was fighting against Minato when he was 14 popped back in and captured Naruto nothing could have been done. There was no one powerful enough to challenge 
challenge Obito in that point of the story, Kakashi wouldn't be able to do anything. The third Hokage would have gotten bodied. Jiraiya wasn't even in the village and he would get bodied by Obito as well. It would have been the easiest thing in the world. So why doesn't Obito do that? Well, like everything, there are two explanations. An out-of-universe and in-universe explanation. The out-of-universe explanation is very straightforward because the story needed to happen and Obito couldn't exactly. capture Naruto Fuck when he was five. Idiots. The yeah. end. But that's obviously not the most interesting explanation. We are trying to find out in universe why Obito never did that. And I want to first debunk some misconceptions about it. Some people will say that Obito was afraid of Itachi and so he never touched the Leaf Village. Well, uh, that's not true. Obito was not afraid of Itachi. He was cautious around Itachi because he knew Itachi could be problematic, but he wasn't- So if you're cautious of someone that can entail to some element of fear, basically. Because if you're being cautious of someone, that means you're aware of, the, of them being a threat potentially to you and being able to be a competitive in, in some type of form or degree to you as well. So yes, that can technically correlate to the aspect of fear. When people mainly say like, Obito was afraid of a touch, whatever, blah, blah, that was like, just to me, like it's hyper literal, I won't go that far, but it was more of as, as a fact that Obito respected his level of power and what was being precautious and potentially being aware that it could, you know, that could be someone just really not worth to fight and fuck with and it, he could learn the hard way. It was just not worth the risk, you know what I mean, type of situation. And Itachi threatens Obito around that time, you know, I mean, before the whole Chia massacre happens. In the novels, it's said, and everything, the anime, the manga, you know, and Obito is like, all right, whatever, I'll help you, whatever. And they kind of could just come to a middle ground, they compromise, goes from there. Obito makes his, his terms, Itachi makes his terms. And that's it. That's what you're working with, right? And it goes from there. So there is, in some form or way, a narrative, you know, element to where Obito was afraid, maybe to some degree, or even if you didn't think he was afraid, he was at least concerned enough or respected Itachi's power enough to the point where it was just too much of a risk. You know what I mean? To take, basically, right? Um, to where he didn't want to have a repeat of Minotaur all over again, you know, or better yet, die, you know? So... That's all I'll say on that, but you know, at the end of the day, one simple aspect is Atachi was definitely the main, main obstacle or hurdle for Obito of, for the main reason why he didn't do really anything for the most part throughout that whole time frame, and that's completely understandable, and a lot of people really agree with that as well, that it was mainly due to the agreement that he had with Atachi, so this is what you're working with, and then it's also further along established, even in Shippuden, to where Obito waited for Itachi to have his death match with Sasuke, and it even says in his mind, thinking, if Itachi knew everything about me, I would be dead. You know, so even during later times, Obito acknowledged Itachi as a threat, et cetera, et cetera, and was playing the safe game, basically, you know? So, I don't know, bro. It's, 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 pretty, it's pretty definitive, you know what I mean? Of why Obito didn't do anything with Naruto around that time. Now, what I will say, though, um, which Daigo was kind of uh, leading to a great point with this was after the whole Nine Tails incident, and th this reminds you, this is when Itachi's a kid as well. Okay, so there's no reason at all, and Obito even comes back to uh, to kill like the Federal Lords as well, and killed a Itachi's uh, a teammate as well, which eventually awakens his shotting gun, and he could have killed Itachi there too, and he didn't. But Orochi, uh, Obito was still a, a thing, still crazy strong, and everything. The whole Nine Tails attack happened and whatnot. Clearly, Flex said he's no joke, right? And he had plenty of opportunities to come back and do the job, right? You know what I mean? And get Naruto back because he only lost his Zetsu arm. Gets a new arm, right? Like he always does. And he could have just gone back and got Naruto. Yet he never did. And at that point in time, he had there is no reason for, to, for him to stop. You know what I mean? So, like, the fact that he didn't, that was really interesting. The only way you could kind of justify Obito to like or him not wanting to do anything at that point in time was that maybe he was extremely conflicted or he had some form of regret or guilt or he was dealing with some type of internal conflict in his head with the whole Madara persona and between his own person as AKO Ob being Obito to where like after he just almost destroyed the hidden leaf, killed Minato, all this shit, you name it, maybe he was finally feeling a ba backlash of that impact to where he kind of just needed time for, to himself and backed off to, in a way, but then was still back in a tug of war of like, you know, still being bad in a sense, you know, why not? So maybe there's, there is some, you know, way to justify it, but the problem is it's all spe like speculation and possibility territory. 
and we don't really get evidence to know Obido's conflicted, okay, until in Shippuden, to where it shows all his past memories, his past experiences, etc. So, you know, it's there's only so much you can go with. We don't have anything to definitively prove that was the main reason, but it's possible that was could have been the reason that he was still conflicted or his whole mentality, you name it, etc. Not going to go into all the details, but you know that would basically be the main reason. And that's all you're working with at that point, you know, and that's completely understandable because with everything we see in the in the war arc with finally all his memories coming out into into play with him looking at the village, going to Rin's grave, you know, um, what's it called? Uh, watching Kakashi, then going to the, the Hidden Leaf and, and, you know, thinking about whether if he really should go through with just destroying everything, et cetera, et cetera. There's so much evidence. And then even to the point where he even he didn't even kill Kakashi. He just, he, you know, he didn't take his eye back. He didn't kill Kakashi. He just leaves him and then goes to Mara. You know what I mean? Like, there's so much evidence that you can use. Statements, feats, you name it. So, like, it's definitely a possibility, you know, that he could have still been conflicted around that time and is backtracking in a way, whatever, and then eventually got back on the bandwagon and started forming the Akatsuki. And by the time he was ready to finally go through again, it was kind of already too late because now he has a new problem with Itachi being in the picture, who's like the new Minotaur to him now, right? So... That's kind of what you're working with. Or if you think that's all just bullshit, whatever, blah, 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 then you could basically be like, nah, there's no reason because when he eventually starts the Nine Tails incident, like he dead ass just says verbatim, like none of it matters anymore to me. I don't care at all. All of it can be gone. Everybody can die. I don't care. I will accomplish my dream. And at that point in time, he was being dead ass. There was nothing holding him back. He was no longer conflicted, trying to kill Minato. Didn't give a fuck about Naruto's mom. Didn't give a fuck about anybody. Not the village. Nothing, bro. You know what I mean? You name it. And better yet, that's even further, further enforced with him willing to kill his own clan, kill his own grandmother as well, and aid Itachi in slaughtering the Uchiha. You know? So, like, it's like, come on. You know what I mean? Like, so, it's really tricky when it comes to that point in time. You can advocate for either side, but I'll leave that up to you guys and what you think. Eventually, when it gets further along in the story, eventually, in my opinion, it becomes to a point where there's just no excuses at all for Obito anymore. But we'll see what Daigo Nai has to say eventually through all those points of time. So I'm assuming he's going to bring up every point in time of when we see Obito and all the opportunities that he does have to take Naruto or do something, right? You know? Um, and then we'll just keep going from there. So, Shaking all his boots just by thinking about Itachi's presence around him or anything like that. like that and, and Daigo has a good good point there because it wasn't like some Madara shit you know what I mean it wasn't like when he saw Edo Madara like where he's clearly freaking out and is afraid that wasn't like that at all with Itachi he just respected Itachi's power enough to where he was well aware that he could potentially be killed by Itachi or it was just too risky to engage with someone like that with that caliber and that's why he was playing the smart game just to be patient wait it out and once he's gone whatever then he can do whatever the fuck he wants now right you know so no. And even if that was the case, when Naruto was four, Itachi was like nine. Itachi was too young to be any problem for Obito That's in that it. point of the story. The Uchiha clan was alive, but as we saw after, you know, the Uchiha clan massacre, Obito dealt with the Uchiha clan pretty well. He massacred the entire police and they weren't a problem for him. And Obito has the best possible infiltration jutsu in the history of manga yeah. slash anime. Kamui is absolutely brilliant. Broken. You can yep. teleport into the Leaf Village without being noticed. Hey, you saw can right pass there. Casey and Naruto over there reacting to fucking his combo and shit. <laughs> through walls, just like he did to enter Minato's hideout when Kushina was giving birth. Getting Naruto would have been the easiest thing in the world. But the Nine Tails was a different tail beast than the others. It is stated in the story that it must be the last one to be captured in order for the tail beasts to be sealed properly inside the Ghetto Mazu, or the absolutely bestial power of the Nine Tails would disrupt the Ghetto Mazo if it got inside the Ghetto Mazo before the other tail beast. So why did Obito attack the Leaf Village when Naruto was being born in the first place if that was the case and if he knew that and he did know that? Well, it's because that was a good opportunity and Obito took it. Kushina was pregnant, the seal was going to weaken and it was going to be rather easy to extract the Nine Tails which could be very troublesome, especially when it comes to the Reaper Death Seal, a very powerful 
powerful ceiling jutsu. This wasn't an opportunity Obito could pass, even though he wouldn't be able to properly seal the Nine Tails for quite some time. However, because he could extract the Nine Tails so easily, he could use the Nine Tails as a weapon to get the other tail beasts while he couldn't seal it into the Ghetto Mazo. He was able to control the Nine Tails flawlessly. He casually put the tail beast under Genjutsu and made it attack the Leaf Village. Without, you know, much trouble at all, he looked at the Nine Tails and she uh, was Genjutsu under Genjutsu. Genjutsu. This yeah, wouldn't Genjutsu is all the tail beasts in the war. You know what I mean? When it goes full tail beast transformation, immediately does a shotting on Genjutsu to its attainment. Also. wouldn't really be possible without Kushina being pregnant because Obito wouldn't be able to break the seal like that and outright remove the nine tails from her. The extracting method with the Ghetto Mazo is quite more difficult because the ceiling is usually stronger and the nine tails would be inside of the Ghetto Mazo. Obito wouldn't be able to use it to its fullest potential. Also, having to control the Jinchuriki, transform the Jinchuriki into the nine tails if you want to remove it would be much more cumbersome and you would have to keep the Jinchuriki alive for quite some time up until when you capture all the other tail beasts which took Obito, you know, over a decade to accomplish. So keeping a hostage for that long isn't the best thing in the world and the Leaf Village would definitely be after you. And Obito didn't want that type of attention in the time. It's very clear that Obito did a covert operation on the Leaf Village so that the only person that knew somebody else attacked the village other than just the nine tails going ballistic was Minato and probably Kushina. But Kushina just gave birth, she was probably very dazed and barely even saw Obito coming even though Obito captured her, so yeah, she knew. But it was only the two of them and they died in the event. So Obito covered his tracks really well, he made everything seem like a random event or even better, he incriminated the Uchiha clan who were all out for a mission and they were, you know, the prime candidates. Dudes that can control the Nine Tails, they were out of the village in that day, and then all of a sudden, the Nine Tails goes ballistic. The guys are not there. It's a perfect plan because Obito didn't get noticed. Naruto only found out that Obito slash the masked man slash martyr attacked the Leaf Village when he found when he spoke to Minato after Minato saved him from the Nine Tails consuming his entire yeah, body. Because Minato. Other than that, the only other thing that was out there was just speculation to where. Jiraiya eventually came to the conclusion that it was a possibility that Madara could still be alive and that he was the one that he was the reason why the Nine Tails incident even happened to begin with. So there was like there was people having theories, aka like even people like Jiraiya, but that's all there was. It was just speculation, theorizing, you name it. While Minato obviously was the only one with actual hardcore knowing, you know, and et cetera, et cetera. And then eventually Naruto finds out, and then eventually Kakashi knows, you know, so actually saw what happened. It wasn't in the best interest of Obito to let himself be found out by anyone in that point in time. No, nobody could know Madara Uchiha quote-unquote was alive and he was forming a new organization. Otherwise, the five major villages would have come together much sooner than what they did in the series and things would have been much more complicated. They would go hunt down the Akatsuki before it even forms and sure, Obito is extremely powerful and he could just phase from place to place, teleport away, he probably wouldn't be caught, but this would be bad for his plans. He couldn't be found out. He had to form the Akatsuki using Nagato in a pretext that the Akatsuki were initially just making jobs for a very cheap price for anyone that asked. That's the first stage of the Akatsuki. They were just mercenaries and then they started to capture the tail beasts. Only after they've acquired money and some influence, they needed to form the Akatsuki in the first place to to be able to seal the tail beasts into the ghetto Mazo. As you may remember, they had to combine all their chakras when they were 10 Akatsuki members to, you know, use that dragon sealing jutsu and collect the tail beasts. They even state every single time when they lose a member, oh, it's getting more difficult to seal, it's taking more chakra, it's taking more time. So imagine if Obito had to do that alone. He probably wouldn't even have enough chakra. Granted, he had a lot of it, especially in the war, but it's very much 
imply that he got that boost because of the Renegon, and he didn't have the Renegon at the time, and so he would need more powerful Akatsuki members to pull the Nine Tails and the other Tail Beasts as well out of the Jinchurikis. And the Nine Tails had to be the last one, so it wouldn't really make sense for Obito to go and capture Naruto. He would have to keep this boy, this very annoying boy that he wanted to see because it probably reminded him of his sensei for Obito. And that's that's another thing too, like with him having to see Naruto, knowing that it's Minto, Minato's son, reminding him of his sensei, or and even himself, because Naruto is extremely similar to Obito as well. For over a decade, and, and if something went wrong and Naruto died during captivity, then it would take years for the Nine Tails Chakra to coalesce back into nature, and this would put a stop to the Akatsuki's and the Eye of the Moon plan. Obito has always been arrogant after he became the bad Obito. He always found himself to be stronger than anybody else, that he was always on top of everything, that he knew everything around him, and that he had everything under control, so he never thought Naruto would grow powerful enough to challenge him or even the leaf village to begin with he thought yeah i can just go and grab this guy whenever i have to whenever the time comes he doesn't even do it himself in naruto shippuden he tells pain to go and do it for him and then he tries that in the work but then in the work he didn't even need naruto anymore because he had a partial amount of the nine tails his chakra from ginkaku and kinkaku and he could just create the ten tails from that even though it was a a weaker version he could do so and he didn't really send pain because he didn't think he was powerful enough to do it he clearly was he infiltrated the leaf village when he was 14 when he was 27 it would have been much easier he was more powerful more experienced everything it's just that well i don't really have to take care of that kind of business i have my organization that i pull the strings from you know behind the scenes so they do all the stuff for me while well, i stay back here and i'm just going to execute the plan when the time comes it's only in the war arc that he really starts to do things. And you have to understand, Obito is the type of character that likes to give those statements saying that he has no feelings anymore, that he doesn't care about the world. But going back to the Leaf Village again would be an emotional hurdle, especially if he met Kakashi. And if he went back when Naruto was four and he was like 19 or something, then things would be worse. He wasn't the 27-year-old Obito that was fighting against Kakashi and all that. He was still more immature and just bringing back those memories, everything that happened with Rin would be something that would affect him and he would just probably want to avoid it. Even if he didn't want to admit it to himself, that's something he didn't want to feel again. He didn't want to remember about his past. He was trying to bury it down. Though we see when the time comes and when he needs his memories and his attachments, when the Ten Tails was trying to consume and rip his body apart, he remembered his old team to keep his body together. Those feelings were always there and Obito didn't want to bring them back, so he wouldn't want to go back in the Leaf Village, and if he didn't absolutely need to, he wouldn't do so. So much so that he sends Spain anyway when the time comes for them to capture Naruto, he doesn't go himself. Subscribe to this channel if you've enjoyed this video, oh. like the video as well. Some very good interesting points and arguments uh, that he formulated and, you know, good directions and good basic justifications to justify why Obito didn't want to ever do it himself or just get it over with because, you know, once they have Naruto, that's it, you name it, right? So, here's what I'll say on this. So, as for everything all the way before, you know what I mean, like, the, like right after the Nine Tails incident, and uh, that's a hit and miss. You can go all day or whatever. You know what I mean? I still feel like it could still favor an Obito. It's like in, the, in this defense to justify why he still didn't do it around that time. And even Daigo Knight kind of hit pretty hard in those narrative elements and, and points as well. So that's fine. Whatever. Leave it there, right? Then Itachi comes into the play. Now he's kind of the main issue. So that's, that's basically the main justification you have for, for that. And along with the other things Daigo Knight brought up to where they need to capture them in order, etc., etc. Yada, yada. And with them not uh, being fully aware or, you know, or alerted with about every, you know, by everyone in the world, they want it to be not as known and cause or get too much attention because then that could be problematic and cause unnecessary issues. So you have all that stuff, right? But this is where it gets really bad, in my opinion, for, for Obito. So where it gets really bad is to where Itachi eventually dies. They have all seven Biju. They now um have captured the eight tails technically so now the nine tails is like all right let's go get him now right and obito sends pain to do it whatever you name it 
We know how that went. Okay. At that point in time, Obito literally can travel with Zetsu anywhere. They have the most broken transportation technique. Okay. You know, and most insane transportation. Zetsu can also te communicate telepathically with Obito from a large amount of distance as well. So not only can they both communicate with each other and travel anywhere, okay, and have the most insane abilities to be able to infiltrate, you know, villages or get in without being detected, etc., right? Okay. They never do that. They never go to help Pain. They never go to get Naruto right after the aftermath of helping Pain when he's, like, fully fatigued and exhausted. And they do show up, by the way. We do know that they eventually come. Zetsu and Obito is there, and they literally stop Sasuke from attacking the village and everything, you name it. And like, hey, you don't want to do that, whatever, blah, blah. And it kind of goes from there, and then Obito kind of um, plays him, manipulates him in a way. He's like, hey, Donzo's going to the Five Kage Summit. You want to go there if you want to get your revenge, yada, yada, yada. And it kind of goes from there, right? At that point in time, Obito could have gotten Naruto. He didn't. He could have gotten him before. He doesn't. Then it gets even worse to the point where fucking... Uh, when Naruto is sleeping, Obito is literally behind him, watching him sleep, and then wakes him up and says, yo, like, you know, well, how's it going? I want to talk, you know what I mean? Because he was really intrigued to how he was able to basically persuade Nagato to betray him, you know what I mean? And Obito could have captured him. Not only could Obito have captured him right there and then, but he doesn't, okay? But then Obito, like, has a full conversation with him, right? And then after hearing the reasoning and everything, he could have also captured him right there. And then even though Kakashi and Yamato were there, let's be real, they were not, they're not strong enough to stop him, okay? So he still doesn't capture him. And at that point in time, he wanted to capture Naruto and have all the tail beasts. He literally goes to the Five Kage Summit, declares war on all of them, okay? And asks them to hand over the Nine Tails and, and Eight Tails. They say, fuck you. He's like, oh, okay, cool. I declare war then. Flexes, you know, his power, like, you can't do nothing to me, and then just leaves. And then still doesn't get Naruto, even though he knows where Naruto is. How the fuck does that work? Like, where's the... I'm sorry, but where's the justification in, in, in all of that? Because that just doesn't make sense. Because at that point in time, he, want, he wants Naruto and Killer B, you know what I mean? So why would he not? When he has all these opportunities to do it at that point in time. Yet he still chooses not to. Chooses to go get a Rinnegan and have a death battle with Conan. Get the Rinnegan, you name it. Then summon the Ghetto Statue. And then eventually use Kinnigan's uh, fucking Ninetales Chakra when they're brought back as an Edo. And then use the Eight Tails uh, Leg and Chakra to, the, to do their whole plan anyways. Like, so for one, Obito could have launched his, his plan without even declaring war. He could have literally just... Kinnigan could have been summoned, could have used their chakra, then he could have used the eight tails arm chakra, summon the ghetto statue, make it transform, now have the ten tails at his aid, and go fucking just start dominating and not even allowing Konoha or anybody to, to prep for war, you name it. Could have done all that as well and taken Naruto. Like, there's just so much he could have done more better and logically, you know, but he didn't, you know. So then it just comes to the question, like, why would he not? What is it a plot hole? Or is there some form of justification for it? You know? And at that point in time, the only thing I can really think of if we're going to try to justify or give him any excuses, once again, back to the whole confliction argument of him not really knowing who he is, being a mixture between two personas, Obido and Madara, you know what I mean? And basically just back and forth cat and mouse game of just fully delivering and then pulling out and then fully delivering and then pulling out. You know what I mean? And it just kind of comes to that, and that's really the only defense I feel like you can use in any way or form or shape. But at the same time, it just doesn't make sense because he still, even though he can show confliction here and there or this or whatever, blah, blah, the whole nine yards and all this great narrative analysis that you could do, right? He's still going through with his plans and still wants to capture him and still do it at the end of the fucking day. You know what I mean? He still does a whole war, kills thousands and thousands of people, kills Neji, tries to force Naruto to join the dark side. You know what I mean? You name it, et cetera, et cetera. And just keeps on and keeps on and keeps on. And he's basically trying to break Naruto and make him go into full despair. You know what I mean? So it's like, it, then it really comes to questions like, is really is that really the, the justification of the excuse? You know what I mean? You see what I'm saying? So no matter what, however you guys consider, whether if you think it's a plot hole or if you think there is some justification for Obito, you let me know down in the comments down below what you guys think. 
I will eventually be doing a video with Jay the Great as well and Shinobi. And who knows? Maybe for shits and giggles to give you guys a tease. Maybe. This is a big maybe. Maybe I'll even show you. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I'll even do a video myself of talking about Obido. You know, maybe. That's a big maybe. But I might maybe. To where I can at least show you all the scans that I'm referring to. This way you guys can fully understand my thought process and see all these opportunities and points in times where he's able to do things. Like... I'm gonna be honest with you. Just a quick thing. One prime example. When Jiraiya makes a statement, you know, and talking with the frog dude and telling him that I think, you know, Madara is still alive and he's the one that's responsible for nine tails, the frog laughs at him, whatever, blah, blah. Then he thinks in his head, he's like, I don't know, but I just have this feeling. And it shows Obito sitting on top of Madara's head in the final valley where Naruto and Sasuke fought. And he's just sitting on the fucking head, not doing nothing. It's like, motherfucker, go fucking do something, bro. Go capture a beast or go do something. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, so like, I don't know, bro. Like, when there's just certain points and times where it's just, it's really, really interesting. Really, really interesting. Another point in time as well to even bring up is also like, after Naruto does his rising gun and Shidori clash with Sasuke when Sasuke's fully fatigued, Obito comes back instantaneously to come save him and help him, which proves even further he can immediately arrive anywhere he wants to Sasuke or Naruto. Okay. Literally gets there. And then instead of capturing Naruto and taking him in while he has aid from Zetsu and Sasuke as well, and arguably he could even teleport and get Kasame and teleport him there as well if he wanted to. But regardless of all that, instead he's like, you know what? Nah, we won't capture Naruto. Don't worry about it, whatever. Well, I'll set up that fight and have Sasuke do it instead. It's like, bitch, so you're telling me you're going to take the chance and risk of Sasuke potentially losing that fight as well? Or maybe not even getting Naruto when you could do it right there and then, bro. <laughs> like, like, just fucking do it, you know? Like, so, I don't know. It is it is what it is. It's really interesting. But once again, you guys let me know what you think down below. Uh, leave a like, comment your thoughts, subscribe for more content. Subscribe, you guys, on the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye, me now.